Konnichiwa minasan, this is Misimu Orahara and today we are gonna talk about another story of a monster, a real monster in terms of Ryatsu, personality, power, Yamamoto Ginryusai. First, we can divide the story of Yamaji into three parts. The first part is when he was younger, 1000 years ago, and the second part is Yamaji and the anime events. The third part is Yamaji and the final arc events. But let's start guys from the second part. Yamaji, like other old men in the anime, just by his look you could feel this old man really something big. As a captain commander of the Goshi 13, Yamaji, his presence was making everyone could sense the charisma of centuries come out from him. And during the events of the society arc, Kobo gave us just a few hints about Yamaji, like his relationship with Kyoraku and Okitake since they were his students, and also for the first time we saw Yamaji making a move when he was about to fight Kyoraku and Okitake. Oh my god, those muscles and those scars of his past battles, it made me wondering about how many fights he got, especially when he met Nanao fainted only by his own Ryatsu and releasing his Shikai Ryuji Jakka for the first time in the story. But thanks god the fight between them stopped it, because guys don't tell me Kyoraku and Okitaki had a chance to win this battle with that beast, no way. Anyway, after we got those few signals about Yamaji, a big question came to our mind. When we will be able to see Yamaji fighting and against who? The answer of that question was slowly approaching as we entered the middle of the Arankara arc when the Espada and the Shinigami met. For the first time, Yamaji used one of his Zanpakuto techniques, Jokaku Injo, and through these techniques, appeared the legend of this fiery shikai. Just imagine, you strike the boss of the enemy only with the shikai. And then Yamaji got a monster, the monster ion, that defeated three vice captains by one strike. The fact that Yamaji had that legendary Zanpakuto with its destructive powers made the old man think less in the fights and here we will talk about uh, the negative side of Yamamoto. It's true that no one compared to him as a Shinigami in the strange of his attacks but when it's come to the brain, his weakness appears when he fights a strong and intelligent opponent. And this is what happened with Aizen who knows perfectly that it's impossible to defeat the old man with that monster city in his hand. But taking the power of his Shikai Ryujin Shaka showed us another side of the old man which is the fact that he is a masterpiece in Hakuda and how he destroyed the Wandra wise only by his hand. However, his suicidal idea of sacrificing himself to kill Aizen was a disaster and it cost him his hand using that uh, Hado when Aizen has the Hokyuku that protects him from this sort of attacks. And so, his path in the anime it ended with several change in Yamaji, from many aspects. First, he lost his hand, and also his thinking changed a bit after Ichigo and Kiski, who are not a part of the Guti 13, helped the Guti to raid the world of Aizen, and that was clear in the arc of Ginjo, when Yamaji and the Gochi uh, helped Ichigo to bring back his power. Almost these are the most important things that the old man had in the anime. And now let's pass to the most important part of the story, which is Yamaji in the final arc. Unfortunately, Yamamoto stayed with us just for 32 chapters. Though I didn't like the ending of Yamamoto with that way, but other than that, Kobo did an amazing job drawing Yamamoto and went deep in his personality in the final arc. Starting with the early chapters when the Weinreich declared the war in front of Yamamoto and how he was looking to them and saying that he don't need any bodyguards. That was awesome scene from Kobo. But also for the first time we get to see the kind side of Yamamoto. 
the kind side of that old man and how much he was respecting his vice. For the first time, we could see Yamamoto was suffering from the sadness because of the death of Sasakibi and the thing get deeper when we saw his flashback with him. Oh man. To be honest with you guys, I wish if Kobo could write over uh, 100 chapters of that era, the era when Yamamoto was younger and, and he was looking so badass and powerful with that samurai look with other Shinigamis. And the flashback was the presentation of what we called later the flashback of thousand years ago. And just from that short flashback we knew many things about Yamaji, like he was the founder of the Ginryu and one of the scars that are on his forehead it was caused by Sasakibi's Bankai, but we didn't know who caused the first one. Probably Yohabach? Maybe yes, maybe not. But speaking about Yohabach, we have reached the peak of Yamaji's story. Yohabach wasn't just the villain of the final arc, but he had direct relationship with Yamamoto. The two went through a deadly battle thousand years ago and wasn't a normal battle. The young Yamaji raised his Bankai to defeat Yohabach and he was uh, almost about to do that but in somehow he failed and we don't know how. But guys, believe me, before the starting of the final arc I wasn't expecting even in my dream that Kobo will draw the Bankai of Yamaji. Because just imagine how the Shika is powerful. I was saying what the thing that could be the Bankai of Yamamoto until the chapter 506 was the surprise waiting for us. Zanka no Tachi. The Bankai of the oldest and the most powerful flame type, Zanpakuto. Wow, just a few minutes after the release of his Bankai, the Soul Society was suffering from the heat of Zanka no Tachi. Even the Bankai of Toshiro was melting. The Zanka no Tachi truly a legendary Bankai. To develop your Bankai over 1000 years with all those crazy techniques, west and east, south and north, and uh, making an army from zombie, it's something unusual at all. But here is where the problem we talked about Yamaji lies. It's true that the fight between him and the fake Yuhabach was amazing, but in fact, he was just wasting his power on the wrong person. And when Yohabach came, he did the same thing that Aizen did. The only difference was that Yohabach stole the power of Zanka no Tachi. The fight wasn't balanced. For four chapters, it has been one-sided fight. And then one chapter after, Yohabach shows up and finishes the old man. I may accept this, but what I will never accept is the humiliation that old man suffered in his death. The way he died was so humiliating. When you see how the white bird died in One Piece and other old men in other manga, you will realize that Kobo didn't give an appropriate end to the old man. Despite that, I still quite like it. You have words about Yamaji, which brought us to the last part of Yamaji's story. You have talked about the reason of Yamaji's defeat, which is that he is no longer the same person he used to be thousand years ago. A merciless murder and swordman as the rest of his group. And here we saw the first picture of the first generation of the Gucci Churchin. Just from their appearance you will get to know how powerful those guys who were led by Yamaji. Yamaji was a cold-hearted killer, but his personality started to change after peace prevailed for several years, as you Haibach said. And the prime example of that is none other than the other person who was part of his group, Yashiro Onohana or Retsu Onohana. She was a murderess as him in the past but her personality changed to the woman we knew during Bleach Art. Yamaji's story ended with his death in the 511 chapter but there's still a lot of things to be known about him and the reminded talk around him. And one of those things is the fight against Yuhabach and the events before uh, 1000 years ago. Yamamoto Ginryusei is a legendary character, not only in Bleach, but in the whole shonen manga. Shame he didn't have a better death. So guys, this is the story of Yamamoto. 
what the thing that you like about Yamamoto and the thing that you don't like and what the things you want to know more about him. So see you guys in my next video with another story of a monster.